You know, I remember how delighted I was when I unboxed and smelled Dior Homme Cologne for the very first time. Now, it actually wasn't this ginormous 200 milliliter bottle that I bought first. It was the 125. It looks something like this. It took a lot longer than I expected to get out. These bottles stack so good that it's hard to get them out. This is it. My first ever bottle, Dior Homme Cologne. Funny little story about this. I picked this one up back when Notino.com was a thing in the United States. Now, they do still exist overseas. Unfortunately, not here anymore. Rest in peace. They were a great discounter. They were going out of business here, and uh, they were they were liquidating stuff. I believe I got this for like $60 or something, which for a Dior Homme Cologne 125 mils is a very, very generous deal. Um, and so it, that was really the only way I could afford it. This was at the very beginning of my collection. You can go way back on the channel and see me rave on about this one. So this is where it all started. And you know, when I smelled this for the first time, I knew it was something special, albeit very, very simple, but special. So, you know, time goes on. I decide I want to just get a 200 milliliter. No reason to. I still got plenty of this one here, but I, I you know, I, I just wanted to basically kind of dumb, but whatever. Um, so what we have today, long story short, is the new Dior Homme Cologne 2022, the rebottle. It's probably going to be the exact same thing, but we're going to bust this one open, compare the bottles at the very least, and you know maybe the scents are going to be different. We'll dive into that as well. You really don't know what to expect. Again, I'm thinking more so it's just a rebottle to match the rest of the, the fragrances, but I feel like I would be you know kind of not doing my job if I don't at least give this one a little bit of coverage for the people who are interested in this fragrance. While it may not be that impressive to a lot of people, there is a little bit of a cult following behind Dior Homme Cologne, and I am one of those people. So I'm going to be reliving that, that magic feeling of unboxing Dior Homme Cologne for the very first time. Let's get it open. So here's the box. has a nice texture to it. looks fantastic. Very, very classy. Of course, uh, as you will see here in a minute, this is a little bit ridiculous. I have to admit that, you know, was this necessary? Absolutely not. But you know what? I did go with the 200 milliliters. That means I've got over 500 milliliters of this fragrance. Um, it, is it a smart financial decision? Probably not. But you know what? I wanted to compare these two head to head. So let's zoom in and see. So coloration wise, looks to be the exact same. So old style right here, new style here. You can see the difference down there, um, Dior Homme Cologne, the lettering is stacked on the new one here. Uh, on this one, it, it's, you know, a little bit different. Going up to the caps, the caps are also the same. Now, let me pull up the picture again. I could have sworn in the picture. Okay, so this is, this is weird. Um, I bought this from Dior's website officially, but that's not quite how it looks. Um, can you see that? So there's that. Uh, I don't think I actually even got the full new bottle. That's a little bit strange, right? Um, let me check on something. So yeah, uh, they sent me old stock or, you know, not old stock, but old style bottle basically, uh, on the website too. And this is exactly where I bought it. Getting pop-ups galore. Feels weird holding up a phone, by the way. I haven't done this very often. That's what it looks like, right? The cap and everything, they didn't send me that. So if you want this style bottle, go ahead and get it now from their website. I guess they're liquidating this. Um, but you know, I'm still gonna go over this anyway. I've already started the video. If you wanna click off and watch something else, I will not blame you, I honestly won't. I was expecting the new style, um, which is what I thought I paid for. So if you're expecting the new style, be careful. Atomizer is great, by the way. Um, let's just get into it. It's Dear Home Cologne, man. It smells fantastic uh, as I stack up my bottles here. Now, what I love so much about this fragrance is it has this, this nice, bright citric opening, but the sugary sweetness. And this is something that I've picked up on since the very beginning. We go back to the old style here. This is Technically now, probably considered vintage. Um, you know, 
this kind of sugary bite to it. There's only three notes. There's bergamot, there's grapefruit blossom, and there's musk. That's all they give you. That's all they'll probably ever give you. That's really all you need to know about. So the bergamot gives it this nice, bright, tart, and sour opening. Uh, the grapefruit blossom is giving a, a slightly floral touch. And I think that mixing with the bergamot's giving off a little bit of that sweet component. It is so simplistic but also still so captivating somehow. And I think that's what makes this one so cool, right? It, it, there's so many citrus fragrances out there, tons. After all, that, that's kind of the easiest fragrance to make. It's the cheapest type of fragrance to make, right? Typically these citrus compounds just don't cost a lot of money. You know, they're a lot easier to make. Uh, also, they're gonna be a lot more mass pleasing. Uh, so when it comes to creating a product for just a lot of people, Typically fresh, citrus, musk, light woods is going to be the formula to success. You get into tobaccos and honeys and, and vanillas and oots, you, you know, that's a whole different rabbit hole. So uh, on, on face value, citrus fragrances are, are, are simplistic and a lot of times kind of basic. But what I think makes this so interesting is that it is simplistic. It's very stripped back, not a whole lot to it but somehow it's still unique. It's still captivating. And I don't get that from a lot of citrus fragrances. You know, I have a lot of them. That's kind of what I started out liking. And I do have a few that really do stick with me. And when you go over to the niche side, there are a few as well that I can think of. Uh, but from designers, not a whole lot that really truly blow me away. Uh, but Dior Homme Cologne, it has since the beginning and it still does. So it has this like sugary sweet bite nice and sour now as it settles down that kind of uh that vibrant pop starts to dissipate a little bit and uh it, it kind of uh moves to the background from there you get this uh a little bit of a, a nice musky layer this musky base behind it, it smells fantastic uh, it's one that it's hard to dislike to me you know it's hard to really take a look at this one and say that you don't like it. Maybe you don't like citrus fragrances and maybe they're boring to you and maybe this is boring to you and that's understandable. But from the general public standpoint, I, I don't think you would really find too many people that would smell this and think it smells bad. I mean, it's clean and fresh and that's hard to dislike. Again, a lot of people may have preferences for sweeter fragrances on men, something more masculine and leathery, that sort of thing. But it, it's, it's so easy to wear. If you're someone who wants to be as safe as possible with your fragrance, this is the type of thing that you should go for. Now, performance has always been, you know, a little bit below average on this one. Not going to be the best performer. Now, is that a big deal? You know, at the price point, it, it kind of is, actually. It is. You know, I won't sugarcoat this just because this is one of my favorites. I won't sit here and try to butter it up and say, oh, it's the best thing ever on all fronts. Performance is an issue. Now, do I think it, it's challenging to create a fragrance like this that's also very strong? I would say so, because if not, they would have done that, right? I mean, the perfumer behind this one is incredibly talented. And look at Sauvage all iterations. I mean, look at Dior Homme Intense, look at Dior Homme O, a fresher one, look at Dior Homme Parfum, right? Granted, you're comparing some different types of scents, but a lot of them are good performers. It's not just a designer brand trying to create stuff that's watered down so you have to buy more of it. I truly think it would be a challenge for them to make this one very strong, so I don't think it's done on purpose. I think that's just kind of how it is, unfortunately. With that being said though, I do think that the quality and the crispness and the freshness of this one does make up for it. You know, for me, it, it's one of the very few summer fragrances that I will reach for on the hottest of summer days. And I'm talking middle of July, humidity is 100% or some odd number, super high, it, like it's literally wet outside, you walk outside and you're soaking wet from the humidity, it's hot, it's sunny, it's kind of miserable. This is one of the very few, one of probably the, the three off the top of my head out of my entire collection that I would wear when it's that scorching hot. And to me, that says something. Sure, it's more expensive, but at the same time, it's a good quality product. There are alternatives out there that will get you close to this one. At the end of the day, do they do it quite the same way as Dior Homme Cologne? For me, that never will be the case. For a lot of you who want to save some money, I do think like a Mercedes-Benz Cologne would 
you know, achieve the, the same thing for you and you wouldn't really need to go with this necessarily. For me, it's a nostalgia thing. For me, it's just a special fragrance. Sometimes I will wear some of the alternatives, but at the end of the day, when I really want Dior Homme Cologne, when I'm craving it, I go for the actual Dior Homme Cologne and not one of the, the counterparts. Well, you know, hopefully this video did something. Again, it, you know, I, I bought this full retail expecting to get this. So you best believe I'm doing a video anyway. And look, let's be realistic. Uh, it's probably gonna be the exact same thing anyway. I just wanted to cover it so that way it's at least out there. It was about time for uh, an updated Do Your Own Cologne video anyway. I don't even actually know if I have a full review out on it. This isn't a full review, but you know, it's some, some standalone coverage. And spring, summer's coming around the corner. You know, if you want this style bottle, you can buy it from Dior and you just might get it. Um, so that's it, you know, uh, Dior and Cologne. One thing that's cool, and I think they will keep with this new bottle here on the picture, is it looks like the coloration will be the same where uh, the bottle has that blue tint, you know, through the sides like that. Um, very, very cool. I mean, it, it's sharp looking stuff all the way around. Great white t-shirt fragrance, great fresh fragrance. It's super wearable. You know, I now have a ridiculous stockpile of Dior Homme Cologne. Like this is, you know, this is uh, unnecessary, honestly. It really is. Like that's that's pointless. So you best believe I spent 155 bucks on this thinking I'm getting the new one. I'm doing a video on it. So let me know down below your thoughts on Dior Homme Cologne for me. It's always going to be an A star, A plus fragrance, right? It's going to be a, a star, a, a fantastic scent that I have a lot of love for. Let me know down below uh, if you're going to pick up the new style bottle or not. Uh, if you already have it, no need to probably. Uh, again, I, well, chances are it's going to be the exact same. I don't think they can make performance any worse. They're not going to dumb down the quality. Uh, if you're just looking to get into Dior Homme Cologne, this is still a great stepping off point. I don't think they're going to have it modified a whole bunch. And if you buy it right now, this smells exactly the same as my vintage bottle. Yep, sharp, you know, sharp, crisp opening, and they're the same fragrance. That bergamot is strong, very tart. Um, let me actually spray the other one real quick. Might as well do a side by side, right? Nothing else is going on in this video that I feel kind of like I failed, but it's not my fault. It's not my fault, trust me. Tart, tart. You know what? Maybe my vintage is just a tiny bit more sharp on the bergamot, but that could be, that is splitting hairs if it is. I mean, it's so close within a fraction of a percentage, if anything, that it just, just buy it, basically. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.